Ever wondered why the South China Sea, a seemingly insignificant body of water, could potentially trigger a global conflict? Well, the answer lies not in its size but in its immense strategic, economic and geopolitical significance. Situated in the heart of Southeast Asia, the South China Sea is more than just a body of water. It's a bustling maritime highway, facilitating about a third of the world's shipping trade. With its strategic location, it serves as a crucial link connecting the Pacific and Indian Oceans and in turn, the economies of East and West. But the South China Sea is not just about trade routes, it's also a treasure trove of natural resources. Beneath its waters lie vast reserves of oil and natural gas, enough to rival some of the world's leading oil-producing nations. Its rich marine biodiversity also supports a thriving fishing industry that feeds millions across the region. Yet what makes the South China Sea a potential powder keg is the number of countries that lay claim to its territories. It's a complex web of overlapping claims involving not two or three but seven countries. China, Taiwan, Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, and Indonesia. Each of these nations, driven by their own national interests, asserts sovereignty over different parts of the sea, leading to a volatile mix of territorial disputes and escalating tensions. Amidst these competing claims, the South China Sea has become a chessboard for power games, with countries flexing their military muscles and building up their naval presence. This has not only intensified the territorial disputes, but also raised worrying questions about the future of peace and stability in the region. So, how did this sea become such a hotbed of territorial disputes? To answer that, we need to delve into the annals of history. In the following scenes we'll take a deep dive into the historical roots of these disputes, the evolving international laws governing maritime boundaries and the rising military buildups. We'll also explore the implications of these tensions for global security and the possible ways forward. So, let's set sail on this intriguing journey. The roots of the South China Sea disputes trace back to ancient times. Indeed, the South China Sea, a strategic waterway and a significant source of fisheries and natural gas reserves, has been a point of contention for centuries. China first asserted its sovereignty over the South China Sea as early as the Han Dynasty, which ruled from 206 BC to 220 AD. Chinese sailors and fishermen navigated these waters, establishing a presence and exercising control over the islands and reefs. Over the centuries, this presence was sustained, contributing to China's historical claims. However, the story doesn't end there. The arrival of European colonial powers in the 16th century added another layer to the saga. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to navigate the South China Sea, followed by the Spanish, the Dutch, and the British. Each of these powers sought to establish their influence in the region, setting up colonies and trade routes and marking their territorial waters. In the 19th century during the age of colonialism, the South China Sea became a significant battleground. The European powers, along with Japan, sought to exert their dominance in the area, leading to a series of conflicts and territorial disputes. The aftermath of the Second World War further complicated matters, with newly independent nations emerging in the region each with its own territorial ambitions. The 20th century saw a rise in nationalism and the desire for resource control among these nations, leading to a series of conflicts and skirmishes. The Paracel and Spratly Islands in particular have been hotspots for territorial disputes due to their strategic location and potential oil and gas reserves. In a nutshell, the history of the South China Sea is a complex tapestry of sovereignty claims, territorial disputes, and power struggles. The past has left an indelible mark on the present, shaping the dynamics of the region. These historical claims set the stage for the ongoing territorial disputes in the South China Sea. As we delve deeper into this topic, we'll see how these historical roots have grown into a thorny issue that continues to challenge global peace and security. The end of World War II brought about a significant shift in power dynamics in the South China Sea. As the echoes of battle subsided and the world entered a period of reconstruction and healing, the map of Southeast Asia was redrawn. Colonial powers like Britain, France and the Netherlands began to retreat leaving behind a vacuum of power that would be filled by the emergence of new, independent states. This decolonization process was far from smooth. Many of these emerging nations, including the Philippines, Vietnam, and Malaysia, were still in their infancy, grappling with the challenges of nation-building. Amidst this tumultuous backdrop, these states began to assert their claims in the South China Sea, a region abundant with resources and strategic advantages. 
The Philippines, for instance, sought to extend its territorial waters, basing its claims on the proximity of certain islands and features to its mainland. Similarly, Vietnam, buoyed by its victory against French colonial forces, laid claim to the Paracel and Spratly Islands, citing historical usage and occupation. Malaysia and Brunei, on the other hand, anchored their claims on the principles of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, arguing that their exclusive economic zones extended into parts of the South China Sea. Even non-literal states like Indonesia found themselves drawn into the fray as the expansionist claims of their neighbors began to encroach upon their waters. However, these new claims were not without conflict, they overlapped, contradicted and often outright clashed with one another, leading to a complex web of disputes that was further complicated by the historical baggage each state carried. The South China Sea, a region once dominated by the ebb and flow of colonial powers, was now a chessboard for these new players, each vying for control and influence. These new claims further complicated the territorial disputes in the region. The South China Sea, a crucible of geopolitical tensions, was no longer just a stage for global superpowers, but also a battleground for these emerging nations, each asserting their place in the world stage. In 1982, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS, established a new framework for maritime boundaries. This framework was not only comprehensive but also aimed to provide a balanced solution to the growing maritime disputes worldwide. One of the most significant contributions of UNCLOS was the introduction of the concept of Exclusive Economic Zones, or EZs. These zones extend 200 nautical miles from a nation's coast, and within these zones, the coastal state has special rights regarding the exploration and use of marine resources. In the context of the South China Sea, the EEZs have become a central issue. With overlapping claims by multiple nations, the implementation of EEZs has been fraught with controversy. For example, China's Nine Dash Line claim, which accounts for nearly 90% of the South China Sea, significantly overlaps with the EEZs of other coastal states, leading to numerous disputes. UNCLOS also established the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, a judicial body to resolve disputes. However, its rulings are not always accepted. In 2016, the tribunal ruled against China's expansive claims in the South China Sea, but China refused to acknowledge the verdict. This refusal underscores a critical challenge for UNCLOS its lack of enforcement mechanisms. Further complicating matters, not all countries interpret UNCLOS in the same way. There are disagreements over what activities are permissible within another country's EEZ, creating additional sources of tension. For instance, while some nations believe military activities in a foreign EEZ are prohibited, others, like the United States, argue they are allowable under the principle of freedom of navigation. Despite the comprehensive framework provided by UNCLOS, maritime boundaries in the South China Sea remain a contentious issue. The overlapping claims, differing interpretations of the law and the lack of enforcement mechanisms have all contributed to the persistent disputes. Despite UNCLOS, the disputes in the South China Sea persisted, escalating tensions in the region. In recent years, the South China Sea has seen a significant increase in military activities. The tranquil blue waters and the serene skies above have become a theater for power display and strategic maneuvers. As the territorial disputes in the region continue to simmer, major global powers have stepped up their military presence, further escalating the tensions. Let's take China, for instance. Over the past decade, it has embarked on an extensive naval expansion, constructing artificial islands and military bases in disputed waters. These efforts are part of a broader strategy to project power and assert control over the contested region. But it's not just about territorial claims. The South China Sea is a strategic waterway, vital to global trade, and whoever controls it wields significant geopolitical influence. The United States too has been flexing its military muscles in the region. It regularly conducts freedom of navigation operations, sailing warships close to the disputed islands to challenge what it sees as excessive maritime claims. These operations, while not new, have become more frequent and assertive, signaling Washington's determination to uphold the rules-based international order. Then there are the other regional players like Vietnam, the Philippines and Taiwan, each with their own military buildups and strategic calculations. They're beefing up their naval and air capabilities, strengthening their defense systems and seeking alliances to balance against the rising Chinese power. But these military buildups are not without their risks. They've raised the stakes in the region making the South China Sea a potential flashpoint for conflict. 
As tensions continue to rise, so do concerns about miscalculations and misunderstandings that could trigger a military confrontation. And given the global significance of the South China Sea, any conflict here could have far-reaching implications, threatening global security and disrupting international trade. In short, the military buildups in the South China Sea are more than just about territorial disputes. They're part of a broader struggle for power and influence, a high-stakes geopolitical chess game played on the world stage. These military buildups have added a new dimension to the South China Sea disputes, raising concerns about global security. The escalating tensions in the South China Sea have far-reaching implications for global security. As the world watches with bated breath, the ripple effects of this territorial dispute extend far beyond the immediate region. The South China Sea is not just a body of water, it's a critical global crossroads. One third of the world's shipping passes through its waters, making it a significant economic artery. Any disruption to this crucial maritime route could send shockwaves through the global economy, affecting nations near and far. Moreover, the military buildups in the region have ushered in an era of heightened insecurity. The specter of a potential military confrontation looms large, threatening to tip the scales of global power dynamics. The South China Sea is not just a regional issue, it's a global one. As nations flex their military muscles, the risk of a minor incident spiraling into a full-blown conflict becomes increasingly real. Such a conflict could have disastrous consequences, not just for the disputing nations, but for global peace and stability. But it's not all doom and gloom, there is a way forward. Diplomacy and peaceful resolution must take center stage. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea provides a legal framework for resolving these disputes. It's time for all parties to adhere to international law and work towards a peaceful solution. The international community has a role to play as well. Global powers must promote peace and stability, rather than exacerbating tensions. They must serve as mediators, not agitators. They should encourage dialogue and discourage military escalation. The South China Sea dispute is a test for global diplomacy. It's an opportunity for nations to show that they can put aside their territorial ambitions and work towards peace and stability. It's a chance to demonstrate that in the 21st century, disputes can be resolved not through force but through dialogue and negotiation. The South China Sea, once a tranquil body of water, has now become a symbol of global power struggles and territorial ambitions. Today we have journeyed through the complex history and geopolitics of the South China Sea. We've seen how historical claims have shaped the present tensions, with multiple nations staking their sovereignty over these crucial waters. We delved into the role of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS, in defining maritime boundaries, yet the disputes persist. We've also taken a deep dive into the military buildups in the region, reflecting the global power struggles that are playing out on this stage. The escalation of military presence not only heightens the tensions but also has significant implications for global security. The South China Sea, a microcosm of global geopolitics, is a complex web of historical claims, legal ambiguity, and power struggles. Understanding the South China Sea disputes is crucial in navigating the choppy waters of global politics. The question remains, can we chart a peaceful course ahead?